possible. So thank you to all those who put in lots of work to clean and decorate this week. Thanks be to God. Um, another exciting announcement is that uh, we are resuming uh, singing with an asterisk. Uh, one verse only, we do ask that you keep your mask on for the singing. Uh, as we all know, uh, our rates are uh, moving in the wrong direction, uh, but we uh, session believes that we can safely sing a little. So that's exciting as well. Um, also, uh, we welcome uh, our executive presbyter for the pastor to the presbyteries, uh, Ian McMullen, who will be uh, preaching today, and we welcome him and thank him. He is here because, um, as you all know, my husband had an onward uh, little injury this week. Uh, not so little, um, but it could have been much worse, so we're grateful for that. I did not intend to make him hurry up the aisle. I just thought it would be nice, since I wasn't preaching, to be able to sit with my husband during worship. Um, so he is obviously doing well enough to be at church, and for that we are grateful. Thank you for all your prayers and support. We light this candle as a sign of the coming light of Christ, as the Lord has promised in days to come. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and sing. The pulpit only is dark.
Please rise in body or in spirit, join in the call to worship. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon the holy name of the Most High God. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. Proclaim the mercy of the one who comes as one of us. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. Trust and do not be afraid. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of peace. The Lord is our strength and our salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us worship God.
Uh, I wanted to introduce you to a friend of mine standing behind you. This is Reverend Ian McMullen. And you know how I'm your pastor? He's my pastor. So he's a pastor to all of the, all of the pastors in the presbytery. And he's here to help me out because I've had a hard week. And now he's going to talk to you guys. So say, welcome, Ian. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, I want to take you guys on a little field trip. Do you mind? Come with me if you don't mind. You can stay right there. Right. Yes. Did you know that um, up here we have a communion table where we have some, oh, some candles and we have this big book in the middle of it. What do you know? What do you think this book is? The Bible. Right, exactly. Did you know that you can actually read this Bible even though it's up here on the communion table? It's got pages and stories and everything in it. And one of my favorite stories at this time of year, before we get to Christmas, I guess you guys are excited about Christmas, aren't you? I know, I am. My daughters called me last night and asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I don't know what you think I should ask for for Christmas. Should I ask for an Xbox or something? New car. New car. <laughs>
Today's Hebrew scripture is from the book of Zephaniah. Our reading is from chapter 3, verses 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you so that you will not bear reproach for it. I will deal with all your oppressors at that time, and I will save the lame and gather the outcasts, and I will change their shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time, I will bring you home at the time when I gather you, for I will make you renounced and praised among all the peoples of the earth, when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit and with fire. 
His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear the threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary. For the chaff he will burn with the unquenchable fire. And so, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed the good news to the people. Our scripture lesson then goes into Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. This is a juicy one. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be, be known to everyone, for the Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a joy it is to be with you today. And thank you very much to, to Pastor Megan for inviting me to help. Actually, I insisted because we pastors are notorious for not taking care of ourselves. Uh, we take care of everyone else. And I want to say thank you to Megan for taking care of this congregation, for taking care of you, and to bless you. Uh, again, my name is Reverend Ian McMullen. I'm the pastor to the Presbyterians, not just of Des Moines, but to Prospect Hill and to North Central Iowa. And I bring you wonderful greetings. Uh, heartfelt Advent readings from the other 140 churches under my care. It is good to be with you to worship the Lord this day, and what a joy it is to be back in the sanctuary. I can see the smiles on your faces. I heard the, the laughter and the, the clapping when uh, Megan introduced the ceiling. Uh, that was <laughs> wonderful. To hear the organ uh, just fill the, the sanctuary and the choir. What a wonderful choir to bring that song and that worship to God. What a great offering that is to our Lord. And we, here we are uh, in the season of Advent, the season, this time of waiting before Christmas. Uh, when I was a child, it was tough to wait for Christmas. Um, and now as a parent or, and as a, um, a pastor, uh, Advent is one of those seasons that holds particular care in my heart. Season of waiting. And yet we are called to be joyful in this season, today in particular. That scripture uh, that Terry read from Zephaniah offers us a glimpse of the hopeful future. It says, Rejoice and exult with all your heart. And our cheerleader, St. Paul, says the same thing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And sandwiched between those two scriptures was kind of a grumpy uh, John the Baptist who was stuck there in Luke, calling people broods and vipers. So what do we hear from the scripture today? Uh, as you may expect from looking at me in profile, one of my favorite things about the holiday season are the wonderful foods that we conjure up. All the way from Thanksgiving through Christmas, <laughs> New Year's, and Epiphany, I love it all. My daughter, Madeline, I have three daughters, by the way. They're all grown outside the house now and uh, doing well. But my middle daughter, my middle Madeline, she is an accomplished baker. And I love her cinnamon rolls. Now, I'm not talking about the cinnamon rolls that you have to bang against the counter to make them pop open. I'm talking about the kind of cinnamon rolls that you need and you painstakingly wait for and they rise and they, they get sugar coated and they get baked until they're just right. There's a blogger named Jacob Myers and he describes this cinnamon roll experience like this. He says, there's something heavenly about the way the cream cheese frosting just sort of seeps down into that sugary, cinnamony mill. <laughs> Those delectable works of art just produce that perfect blend of spice and tang and sugar, sweetness. It brings a hallelujah to my taste buds. There's no wrong way to eat a cinnamon roll, he says, but for his money, there is a right way to eat a cinnamon roll. Cinnamon rolls must be unfurled. You did not buy a cinnamon donut. You did not buy a cinnamon cake. You bought a cinnamon roll. So it must be unrolled. <laughs> and when you start at the outside and you slowly, lovingly work your way around to that inner sanctum, that succulent holy of holies, that center of the cinnamon roll, it feels like Jesus has finally returned. <laughs> Okay, maybe that's a bit much. But you cannot <laughs> deny that the best bite of the cinnamon roll is that culminating center bite, that soft nub of sweetness right there in the middle. 
And what in the world, you may be wondering, does this have to do at all with Philippians 4, <laughs> 4 verses 4 through 7? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, rejoice in the Lord always, I will say it again, rejoice, is that center bite of the Philippians center. It is the culmination, it is the sweet center of that message from St. Paul to the Philippians and to us today. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice, to which our hearts say alleluia and amen. We've been experiencing some tough times the last few years. I think we can all agree on that. With the suffering and the loss and the uncertainty of our beautiful yet broken world, how can we hear these words rejoice and live into them? When we are discouraged and afraid, rejoicing can be a hard sell. But the truth is that joy is not usually inspired by happy circumstances. Let me say that again. Joy is not usually part of happy circumstances. We look at the scripture today and it is believed that the Apostle Paul who wrote these joyful words was under house arrest at the time of these writings. And still Paul could say rejoice, and one might wonder, how could he say rejoice when he's in prison? That's an awful situation. Well, Paul rejoiced because he looked forward to the Lord's coming, like we do. But he also rejoiced because he knew that every moment of his life, the Lord was near. Paul seemed to experience that constant presence, not just in his imprisonment, but throughout his life. And so he could say rejoice. And Paul carried that joy of Advent wherever he went, even in the Roman jail. But for John the Baptizer today, in our other scripture in Luke, where he was very grumpy, with the crowd and the people who were gathered with him, calling them snakes and warning that they will reap the justice that they deserve from their sins, we see that even he doesn't leave it there. He just doesn't just yell at them and then have them walk away. They ask him this, this central question, what then shall we do? And he answers them, and he gives them hope. And I want, to hear, I want us to hear that today. He says you must bear fruit. He says it's not just about those things that you have done or those things you have left undone. He says don't rely on your ancestry because these rocks, God can make these rocks rise up and give them children, give them children from Abraham. He says, don't rely on your history the way we've always done things. Don't rely on the fact that you are the father or mother or son of somebody or daughter. He says, you cannot rely on that. Rely, rather, on the Lord. And John's advice is not dramatic. He just asks them to turn from what is making them comfortable. Hear that. Turning from making themselves comfortable to walking alongside God in the way that God is working already in the world. We have the privilege of joining in what God is already doing. He doesn't tell them to leave their lives and join Him and start a revolution, kind of like Jesus did. But rather, He says, share what you have with the cold and hungry. He told the tax collectors, be honest and be fair. The soldiers, He said, don't abuse your power. John's message was, go home. Go home with integrity. Go home with joy. Go home to your families and your neighbors and your friends and live as deeply and genuinely and joyously as you can every day. Every single day. Because our Christian witness is found in the way we treat others. That witness is the core of Paul's truth to the churches in Philippi and to us, that's the gooey center that I'm talking about today. It's the joy of loving others the way God loves us. Let your gentleness be evident to all, the scripture says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, because divided as we are as a society, we are in this together. What does that mean for us? This Advent season, like the crowds gathered around John, we're seeking answers to the question, what should we do? Too often, I visit churches 
I visit many churches, a different one each week, several times a week. And I hear this question over and over again, what shall we do? Oftentimes, they've already tried answering that question by saying, this is the way we've always done it. This is the way it was in 1950s, or 1960s, or 1970s. <coughs> it's not that way anymore, folks. What shall we do from here on out? What is it God's calling us to do, and where shall we walk alongside God in the world? As we wait and look forward to the coming Messiah, are we engaging in the kind of self-reflection that leads to action? Or are we just celebrating Christmas like everyone else? Or are we Christians who have been changed by Christ to await His second coming joyfully, and in the meantime, work alongside what God is already doing in the world around us? John baptized with water, but the one who came after him, the one who we celebrate each week, who died and was resurrected for our sake, has baptized us with the Holy Spirit. You have received that gift. What a joyous truth. And you say, but Ian, we can't be joyous 24-7. Someone would put us away for that sort of thing. <laughs> Listen carefully to the scripture. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. You will have down days, but God is faithful. Some of your relationships will break, but God loves you completely all the time. Life will be hard sometimes, but let this message ring true. The kingdom of God is near. The next thought I have about rejoicing with the Lord always is taken from tomorrow's reading in the Voices of Advent Past. Uh, this is a book that was produced by this church. A devotional that was prepared by this church and shared with me by Pastor uh, Megan uh, several weeks ago. Thank you for that. I've been actually following along with all of you as you have been going through your devotional. And tomorrow's devotion sounds like this. It is a great joy to observe Christmas Day with family and friends gathered for fellowship and merrymaking, but better than observing Christmas Day is keeping that Christmas spirit all year long. Forget about what you've done for others and remember what you, they have done for you. Ignore what the world owes you and think what you can do for the world. Put your rights in the background and try to do a little more than your duty when you see a need. The only good reason for our existence is not what we can get out of life, but what we can give. Can we close our book of complaints about how the world is managed and look instead for ways to make life better for others each day? Maybe that's the way to keep the Christmas spirit alive. Let's strive to consider the needs of children and the loneliness of those who have grown old. Let us minister to the hungry and the homeless and those who cry out for justice. Let us brighten the day of those who are ill and comfort ones whose promises and problems weigh heavy on their hearts. Let us work toward a deeper understanding of those that we live next to in our own homes. Let us make a grave for our ugly thoughts and a garden for ways to help others. The spirit of Christmas, caring, sharing, love, is the strongest force on earth. And the birth of the Christ child almost 2,000 years ago is still the greatest expression of all-encompassing love that could ever be given. That was written by Marilyn Hayes in 1992. Go home to your families. Go home to your friends. And live your lives as deeply and generously as you can each day. Rejoice in the Lord. Always. Again, I say rejoice. Don't worry about anything, but in everything. Be by prayer and by supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. God has shared with us greatly. God has given us all that we are and all that we have. Our offering today is not just in monetary form. Our offering today is our whole lives. We give over to God that which we have. Our time, our talent, our money, and yes, our very lives. Please uh, consider that 
uh, when you put your offering in the offering plates at the back of the worship service and as we listen to the offering plate.
um, it's, uh, it's a special gift uh, to have not had to uh, come up with a sermon this week, uh, but it's also a gift for a pastor to be able to hear someone else preach from time to time. So thank you, Ian, for that. God, in your grace, a special uh, this prayer, so many prayers for the tornado victims this weekend. Um, the town of Mayfield, Kentucky, I'm sure you've heard, was hit particularly badly, including their Presbyterian church was totally leveled. Um, a friend of mine, her husband, that was his first call. So uh, we pray for, um, for all of those who have been so, so impacted by those tornadoes. God, in your mercy. Uh, probably most of you have heard that uh, our friend Clara Sigurdsson had uh, a bad fall uh, over the week uh, on Monday night uh, and was on the floor for uh, about 12 hours until she was uh, discovered. Um, she is, was in the hospital for several days, but she is now in um, skilled care at uh, Newton Village. So hold uh, Claris in your prayers. God in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Um, Nikki is uh, doing well uh, after her knee surgery on Thursday. And uh, we pray for Nikki and also for Dana, who is uh, who's, who, uh, the, uh, respite house, the Hashman Big Respite House is taking care of Nikki right now. Uh, but Nikki is recovering uh, quickly. So we're, we're grateful for that. God in your grace. Hear our prayer. Uh, we have from time to time prayed for uh, Jeff and Angie White. Uh, they are uh, 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 brother and sister mm -hmm. we uh, came in contact with through our ramp building ministry. Um, unfortunately, Angie uh, had a stroke earlier this week um, and is still in the hospital, uh, still unconscious. Uh, so we pray for Angie and she has Jeff. Been God in your mercy. Something like that, yeah. Particularly peace in Sudan and South Sudan and all areas that are uh, impacted by, uh, by brutal violence in this world. God in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Let us continue in prayer. Offering our prayers and our session to God. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. Lord of life, you call us to prepare the way for your reign. By bearing fruit worthy of repentance, you lift up a vision before us of a world that is shared and fair, where needs are met and no one is outcast. Baptize us fresh in your spirit as we pray. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. We pray for the nations of the world, both allies and those we would consider enemies for their leaders and their people. Make yourself known to us all, that all the peoples of the earth may live in justice and peace. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. For your church here and abroad, that we hear your call for justice as good news for all people. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. We pray for peace in our world, especially for those caught in war, for all who live in fear of violence, extortion, threats, and false accusations. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. For those who suffer from natural disasters, from hunger and cold, lead us to share our food and our coats with them. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. For the frail, the sick, and all those whose hands grow weak, lead us to help them with gentleness. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. For those who are disabled, oppressed, or outcast among us, Change their pain into praise and let their courage be renowned in the world. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. For the earth from 
which we draw our help, our strength, our inspiration, and for all the living creatures in whose community we live. God, you are in our midst. Renew us in your love. Surely, God, we can trust in you and not be afraid. Lead us in songs of praise and shouts of joy, for you are in our midst. We pray through the one who baptizes us, not only with water, but with the Holy Spirit, now and forever. We pray in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise in body and spirit to sing the first verse of Joy to the World.